Hey everybody, what is up? Long time no see. Comic Cowboy here with a new edition, new video. Do me a favor, help me grow this channel. If you want more content, if you want more videos, I'm doing this for the fun of it, for the love of it. Do subscribe, do like. This is a very niche channel with some really delicious items. And I would appreciate any support that you could provide. And that gives me a vote of confidence to continue to produce content for you. Uh, absolutely free. I'm not a dealer. I got no uh, horse in the game other than doing this for the love of it. So topic for this video is going to be, I think, an interesting one. And it is simply put, diversify your collectibles. I'm a comic guy, but I also collect across the spectrum of collectibles, right? I collect everything and I show you tonight, uh, VHS tapes, uh, water grade games, uh, I'm going to show you some collectible cards, comic books, of course, but different genres, uh, different spectrum of uh, the comic book eras for you to take a look at. And the point is why I think it's important to diversify your collectibles. It's the same thing with any type of investment. Uh, you know, if you're doing stocks and bonds, you typically diversify your holdings is a good strategy overall, as opposed to simply buying a few stocks and putting all your cookies in one basket. Although these days, uh, diversify uh, might mean many different things because people buy things like ETS, which are just like this basket of uh, different stocks. There could be dozens of stocks in an ETF, hundreds in some cases. It's like taking a multivitamin. Uh, and I think it's actually a little bit of a, a easy way to invest. I think a little bit of a lazy way to invest. In my opinion, I actually like to pick individual stocks. I like to pick individual bonds. Uh, and in the same thing with collectibles, you want to have, I think, in order, in order to have a really nice collection, you could be principally in comic books. So 80, 90% of all the collecting or investing, or I don't know if you flip books, I don't. I do consign books, but not with the idea that I'm flipping them. I just sell them opportunistically at different times. I'm about 80, 90% weighted in comic books. That's where most of my knowledge is, but I have branched out into other forms of collectibles uh, for the simple reason is they don't all go up and go down uh, in the same wave. You know, right now, for example, Sports cards, graded sports cards have come off their highs, significantly come off their highs. Now they're up over their one year highs, but graded sports cards, basketball, football, hockey, uh, you name it, have come down uh, quite a bit from the highs in the summer months right towards the tail end of the pandemic. Uh, comic books uh, continue to crest higher. They're in July, we're slightly off the May and June highs for keys, just slightly a bit. They've gone off significantly and graded video games continue to go up. They don't all move like a herd of fish, uh, right? You know, summer up, summer down. And by having a diverse range, you're just protecting yourself. You just have a lot of different assets and always collect what you love. I do love all this stuff, but having a diverse portfolio of collectibles really creates a nice foundation mitigating risk because if you're all weighted in one form of collectible they may come down that means your whole whole portfolio is going to come down whereas if you've got a baseline of different types of collectibles some are up some are down and you're riding that forward generally speaking in the aggregate your entire collection as collectibles has gone over the last 10, 15 years, if you're buying the right stuff, has been going up, okay? So I'm gonna start off with graded cards. Now, I, um, in all candor, I don't really know collectible graded cards and I got stung. Uh, here you see uh, PSA 9 Topps Chrome uh, 1996 Kobe Bryant rookie card, right? There it is. It's actually a gorgeous card by, you know, arguably one of the top 15 or at least top 20 NBA basketball players of all time. So when I started getting into uh, collectible graded cards, mostly PSA, 
I stuck with, you know, blue chick marquee names, uh, Hall of Famers, uh, you know, some of the top 10 best athletes. Why? Because why take a chance on a today's athlete when they could tear an Achilles, uh, they could blow out a knee and they're uh, tomorrow's uh, Penny Hardaway, right? You don't know where, or Derek Rose, you know, you think of some of these athletes earlier in their career and the hype and where they ended up in their career, not the same. Now that doesn't mean I don't like uh, Trey Young or some of these phenomenal young athletes coming into the NBA right now, but I rather buy uh, a James Harden or maybe someone that isn't as, I guess, sexy as uh, some of the younger players today. She just don't know. They may get injured. They may uh, get into a scandal. Uh, they may get thrown out of the league. You have no idea what's going to happen to these athletes. So uh, I always go with athletes whose careers are over. Uh, usually the risk is considerably lower after the athlete has already posted up a career, presumably. Uh, so I don't chase um, rising stars. You know, I don't. I, I think that's a very risky way to collect unless you're talking about um, small amounts of money. Uh, that's fine. But when I see some of the prices being paid for uh, whether it's an NFT of a young NBA star or a PSA 10 rookie, I think it's actually ridiculous and super risky. Your athlete may get injured. What is a PSA 10 Clay Thompson rookie doing for you right now? Will that guy ever hit the court again and be the Splash Brothers in the Bay Area? Unlikely. Sorry to say, Dubs fans, unlikely. Um, it's just a fact that athletes get injured. So you don't get excited over uh, an Antonio McDice uh, who had knee problems throughout his whole career and buy those pieces. So Kobe Bryant, now all this being said, this has dropped quite a bit. When I bought this off Heritage uh, three months ago, in an open, one of their sports weekly auctions. I bought it at $1,500 with buyer's premium. Today on eBay, you can buy this same card. This is sad to say, a PSA 9 Kobe Bryant Tops Chrome Rookie, right? Great card for about $500 to $600. So I am significantly under the water. That's okay. We're going to look at a whole range of collectibles here. And I'm so much higher on the comic books. I'm so much higher on the Wada games. I'm way up also, believe it or not, on sealed Magic the Gathering booster boxes that I could take a risk on something like this and I could take a little bit of a bath. It's not all going to go up for you all the time. Uh, take for example here, here is the famous uh, 1980 Tops scoring leaders card with the bird Magic Johnson rookie and a, I, you can't see too well in the glare it's a psa 7 it's a phenomenal card i think it's still a great investment uh there is coming to uh netflix uh soon a documentary similar to what they did with jordan on magic johnson who is my favorite basketball player of all time anytime magic touched the ball something exciting something unbelievable happened often for the first time. And I think it's going to be a wonderful documentary. Bird, Johnson, Julia Serving on the same card. This has come down since I picked it up also uh, a couple months ago, about 20%. So it's held steady, uh, but it's come off its highs. But, you know, I think it's, as they say in Wall Street, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of found its, um, it's, it's found its support at, at this number, I think. You know, so who knows, uh, you know, again, <laughs> cover a lot of different bets, buy stuff you like, you know, watch YouTube channels to get informed on this stuff. But just keep in mind when you're watching YouTube channels with the very few exceptions, and I'll talk about a couple of the exceptions, a lot of that material I watch it because I find it very interesting. I find it super informative. It's also in some senses hype driven it's 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 sort of material created from the perspective of a very bullish sentiment of sometimes flipping materials taking profits why 
I don't know, that content sells. It's interesting. People are always looking to make a buck. I think you can make a buck with a different, more conservative, long-term approach to collecting. Buy the stuff, hold it. I don't flip stuff. There's been times I've been tempted to buy something off eBay or the CGC boards. For whatever reason, it goes up 20, 30%. I could flip it. I hold on to it. I just not in that business. Uh, here is uh, an interesting card. This is a uh, Charizard. Um, I believe this is not. Yeah, this is the unlimited here. Uh, PSA eight hollow. Uh, I also bought this off a recent heritage uh, sale uh, and I've dabbled in Pokemon. Uh, I like the game. Uh, I, I like the franchise. Uh, I liked it on mobile when they released uh, the game in AR. I thought that was really interesting. And, you know, I've picked up um, a variety of these booster boxes. Not a whole lot. I don't have a big position in Pokemon. And Pokemon, if you haven't noticed, I'd say over the last uh, three, four months has uh, really taken a sharp dip along with the collectible graded PSA sports cards. They both come down 20, 30%. That doesn't mean you run for the halls. You know, I think it's so interesting, right? Like during the pandemic, these collectibles, uh, presumably when lots of Americans uh, or people around the world were losing their jobs or getting sick, uh, were boosting up and elevating the collectibles market why lots of different theories on that where people using their stimulus checks to buy collectibles or uh, cryptocurrencies. I have no idea. Anecdotally, uh, potentially that's happened. There's lots of theories on that. People at home got nothing to do. So they're sitting there buying stuff online. Uh, conceivably, that's the case. So, you know, as we kind of round uh, the corner, I guess, of the first wave of what this pandemic has been, uh, to the place we're in today, uh, you're seeing in the comic space a, a little bit of a retrace, a slight retrace, 5 10% or even 8% from like the May-June highs. But in some of these other collectibles fields, they, they shot forward super high, the sports cards, the Pokemon, uh, to a lesser extent, Magic. Because Magic, the Gathering is a, a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, because the amount of knowledge that you need to have to pursue Magic the Gathering, in my opinion, is simply makes it quite different from the whole rest of the collectible spectrum. To an extent, comic books is like that. You need to have a really strong uh, sense of the business, a really strong understanding, a deep knowledge base to get into graded comic books. There's just so many eras. There's so much product. Uh, there's so much cost involved. Uh, magic is too. I, I, I do think with magic, it does help if you play and love the game. There's just something intrinsic about uh, knowing how, uh, you know, the, the energy mechanics work and how the gameplay works for you to really appreciate uh, the product itself. I, I, I'm a little bit of a purist. I think it's kind of the same with comic books. I do know people that don't read comic books. They, they buy and sell them. I, I that, That's fine. I've always read comic books. I grew up on comic books uh, in the 1980s. And that's part of the reason, if not all the reason I got into them today. Uh, it's because I read them growing up and I loved them. So buy what you love. Uh, that's another axiom uh, that is somewhat true. So diversify your collectibles. That's the theme here. I dabble in these other areas. I splatter a little bit of paint. Uh, again, the concentration of everything I have is in comics, but I, but I also sort of want to make sure that I've got a foundation of other stuff that may shoot up and may shoot down. Again, in the aggregate of all these things I collect, most of it, if you pile it all together, is moving up, but you're mitigating risk uh, by having a lot of diverse collectibles, and it's fun. Here's another area. I would consider this very niche. If you get into collectible VHS, you're getting into a category or collectible DVD of movies 
whether that's Blu-ray or uh, classic DVDs, that's a really small niche area along with uh, records or LPs. That's okay. You can buy this stuff inexpensively. You're talking about a really core base of people. And as far as today is concerned, this part, this material is not third party graded yet. Look at what happened to vintage video games when WADA came on the scene. We had VGA for years. No one gave a hoot about VGA until WADA came on the scene with a lot of, with a good business model, with a good product, a lot of hype, a lot of marketing, and a partnership with Heritage Auctions to boom, go to market uh, with a, a complete reboot of the entirety of the vintage collectible gaming space was shocking. It was WADA, not the product itself that moved the market. It's not like people weren't collecting this material. People were watching uh, you know, Metal Jesus and Pat the NES Punk on YouTube for years, sizable audiences. It wasn't until third-party great hit uh, Wada Games came on the scene with a big splash, with a lot of money, with a better product that it took off. And there's a lot of hype and a lot of media, never discount that. So could something like that happen to VHS? Possibly. I actually don't think the market is as big as it stands uh, compared to some of these other categories. So certainly nowhere near video games. But that doesn't mean, and yes, there is a third-party graded uh, VHS service out there that was introduced, run out of Los Angeles. I actually don't like the offering. I, I don't think it's a quality product, so I'm not concerned about it. I'm going to wait to uh, a CGC or who knows who uh, gets on the scene and starts slabbing this material. Meanwhile, I've picked up some stuff that by itself, even as it stands today, has a lot of value to it. And this is the first print VHS of Star Wars. Uh, and there's a lot of different prints of this. It's almost like when you uh, have your uh, Super Mario's on the NES, right? There's Oval Seal, you know, there's uh, a Matt Sticker, you know, there's just all these different versions of it. Super Mario 2s, there's Left Bros, earlier print. You know, there's so many different prints of this stuff. Earlier, the better. And so I did a lot of research uh, finding out which was the actual first print, not a later edition of Star Wars on uh, VHS. Uh, and no one's really slabbing this stuff right now. And it's not, you can't get this material sealed. You can get some of it sealed. Uh, but most of it you can't. Uh, if this material, and uh, this was probably four or five hundred dollars, that's probably what it sells for. If someone even is able to identify it as a first print, uh, I'll, I'll buy it. I, I bought quite a few of them off eBay. Those that I, I could find. You know, if that stuff ever goes anywhere and actually becomes a graded, encapsulated third-party collectible, that first edition, Star Wars, or Return of the Jedi, or Empire Strikes Back, or any of these iconic films, uh, that's two, $3,000. I, I hate to say this, but the grading makes the product. Uh, it's simply true. The grading makes the product. Until this material gets slabbed, no one gives a damn. That's why I think uh, collectible records, uh, music memorabilia is still a little bit untapped, in my opinion. And I, now I'm inviting people to bid against me on this Beatles stuff, but I don't care. You know, who, who cares, right? You know, this is still a niche channel and, uh, you know, God bless you for watching. So uh, I'm going to continue to stroll through <laughs> this theory of diversification of your collectibles because I think it's a really good one. Uh, here's another category. Uh, that is not for the weak of heart. Uh, it is Magic the Gathering. This is uh, a booster box of Modern Horizons. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't play the game. I'm familiar with the game. I've seen the game. Uh, I know the mechanics. I played it online, but I didn't play with the physical cards. Uh, Modern Horizons, 
uh, is a really interesting, uh, now they have Modern Horizons 2, really interesting, excellent product. I know, and I'll, I'll just be candid, I know everything I know about Magic the Gathering from the very excellent uh, Rudy at Alpha, Invest, Alpha Investments channel. I watched that channel. He said that Modern Horizons was an excellent booster box to pick up. He talked about it repeatedly. He did several videos about it. He talked about the EV or the expected value of, of the cards uh, over time that the uh, sealed box would uh, be a multiple of that in the EV of the of the cards itself were almost worth more in present day at retail. I just started buying at boxes straight off eBay uh, when he first started producing those videos, simply put, because I liked the content, I trusted the guy, and I think he was spot on, uh, went to Amazon, uh, picked up maybe 15 boxes at 180. Now I could I could turn them over at 280 to 290, $300 on eBay. I may do that. That's, a, that's an example of, of something you may may want to flip. I mean, it's, I have to tell you, it's that, that simple. I watched the videos. I bought the product. I tucked it away. Now I can sell it. Now Magic the Gathering has done a little bit of retracing. I don't get into the individual cards or the reserve list. That requires a really deep, deep sense of knowledge to buy the individual cards. Uh, you have to, I think, really know the hobby, really know the game to be able to do that successfully. I like the booster boxes. I think they're fantastic. And also Amazon, as you may be aware, has dynamic pricing. Just like every time you get into an Uber, Uber is going to give you a different price uh, depending on time of the day, how busy it is, where you're going, probably your demographics, who you are. And your prices are going to move around all, all the time. They used to call it surge. Now they don't even tell you. They just give you a price. You don't know how the hell they got that price. Well, it's a bunch of product managers and machine learning people and data analysts taking and cooking all your data and getting the highest price for you on any particular trip, on any particular moment in time. This is quite different than going into uh, the grocery store and buying goods off the shelf, right? Imagine that every time you walk into Walgreens, uh, uh, the price of toothpaste uh, keeps changing. It's like, oh, this guy buys toothpaste frequently. Uh, he's here two, three, two, three times a month. Uh, we're gonna raise the price to him. And then someone else coming in the store, we're gonna give them a different price. Uh, that's, that's what these product managers do. They're maximizing. Uh, a price based on a lot of data on you and your demographics and your purchasing power and your habits. Uh, Amazon does dynamic pricing uh, for everybody. So they, along with Hasbro, uh, which owns Wizards of the Coast that produces the game, is just changing the supply. You think they're going low. You're like, oh my God, there's only three left of Modern Horizons booster boxes. I better get one now at 280. Then they go away. Then they put more there and they put it at 300. Then they put it at 275. Then they put it at 350. They change it all the time, always at the highest price. So that's something to know about Amazon and how they've designed their experience uh, for you. Very interesting. Uh, very powerful and something to be mindful of as a consumer when you're shopping at a at a destination that is simply routinely, uh, in, in a way, manipulating the market to get the highest possible price. Fascinating. Uh, getting back into the core area of what I collect, obviously it's comic books, vintage comic books, golden age, silver age, bronze, copper, I even dabbled in modern over the last like couple months, Marvel keys, silver, and also golden, even some of the newer books and the bronze books have gone absolutely hog wild in prices. Look at your GPA and just see that arrow going up and to the right. Look at that hockey stick of growth. It's unbelievable what has happened in the springtime uh, through the summer to now. Mostly from Marvel, and I could explain why. Maybe it's Disney Plus. Maybe it's the pandemic. Maybe it's just the MCU has just got a great slate of films coming up. So I went the other way, and I started buying DC keys uh, because they weren't on fire. 
you know, I don't want to buy product necessarily at the top of the market. So if you were buying an X-Men 1 uh, from 1963 in any grade, low grade or mid grade, you paid a top price uh, in May, June, and now you can get the same book slightly less, maybe 5 8% off uh, this month. So be careful of the wave up. And remember, people, when they say something is going up, that's false. That means it went up. Tomorrow, it may go down. That's kind of uh, false logic when someone says, oh, that's, that's a hot book. It's going up right now. Yeah, it went up to this moment and tomorrow it may go down or it may go up. We actually don't know. All we know is what happened before. Is that an indicator of what's going to happen next? Yes or no, right? Anyway, I started buying the DC keys. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Like this brave, bold 25 suicide squad, reasonably priced. Still it is going up because all comics are going up, but just a fantastic book with a new movie coming out. And I really hope it's good because the first one, as we know, was not good except for Harley Quinn. I love, everyone loved Harley Quinn, as did I. I like the solo film too, it was great. Uh, so I started going around and picking up uh, Bronze Age, Silver Age, uh, DC Keys. Uh, here's the DC Comics Presents 26. Uh, this is a great book. Uh, it's first Raven, it's first Cyborg. Uh, this is still maybe fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars in range. Nine nine point eight. It's a really great, great important key here. I mean, Cyborg. If you've seen him in in Doom Patrol, he's awesome. He's a he's a dude that is going to be part of the Justice League for years and years to come. Now he came on the scene later, obviously, than the other superheroes from the Golden Age, but he's part of the crew now. Uh, and he's going to be around for a long time. We eventually, I think, will see Raven. Raven is a great character. Raven is like uh, Zatanna uh, in the MCU. And as you may know, Hawkman 4, first appearance of her, has gone up significantly. Raven's a phenomenally great, great, much used character uh, in the DC universe, but mostly in the cartoons. Uh, in some of the live action TV, not in the films yet. So, you know, I just buy these great books, these flash keys. Uh, flash is phenomenal. Uh, you can still get really good prices on Golden Age Flash uh, early books. It's just amazing how those prices haven't uh, really taken off yet. Uh, but also, when I say diversify your collectibles, diversify what you collect inside of the category. So, here, you know, I show you some DC keys. I also buy pre-code pre -code horror here. Here's one of my favorite lines. I love the Mr. Mystery. All the, all the covers are so great, so fun. So you could, you could basically diversify within comics itself. Don't collect just one thing. You know, I do pre-code horror. Uh, I do superhero. I do golden age. I do silver age. I don't do a lot of bronze. I don't do a lot of copper and I rarely do modern. Sometimes with the modern, I just, I just love the cover. Uh, it's some of the artwork is so ridiculously awesome uh, that I buy. Hey, uh, last but not least some WADA graded games. I, I do buy these. Uh, here's the last Starfighter in eight, five. This is a, a, actually a really tough, tough game to come by awesome uh cover just like the iconic movie poster uh from the 1980s kind of a kind of a crap movie but people think of it fondly they like the movie um some people may disagree i think the movie is, is kind of goofy uh but this is a this is a great game really really hard to find in this kind of condition uh and i'm looking for stuff like that you know uh, I'm not buying where all the heat is just because there's blood in the water uh, doesn't mean I need to go to where the other sharks are. You know, I'm not going to Nintendo. I'm not going to NES, SNES, N64. Uh, maybe I'll dabble in Wii U <laughs> because all that other stuff has gone up so much. There's not a lot of, of opportunity to get in without paying a lot of money. Uh, so I look for other franchises. I look for other games that people might just not be thinking about. Uh, for example, you know, uh, in the collectible game space, Pokemon, like the red, uh, the yellow, and the blue, which is the first three Game Boy 
uh, titles uh, went up astronomically. They went up significantly. Uh, so you know what? Uh, I started looking at other franchises, uh, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. Uh, this is a really good one on the PlayStation 2. I'd say about a year ago uh, or six months ago, I could readily buy uh, graded uh, PS2 or PlayStation games of these seminal franchises. Uh, and now those have gotten quite expensive. And here, here's one rule. I think across everything I've shown you today, I've got one rule, one principle for the few of you still watching this video, buy franchises, buy lasting intellectual property buy stuff that is still relevant today uh you know buy superheroes that are still in the movies buy video games that are franchises you know things like tomb raider uh these things gears of war uh they're going to be around for years and years and years they're going to keep making the games i don't buy the one-offs i don't buy the one hit wonders i don't buy uh, you know, the Black Terror from the 1940s, even though that is a really cool book. Uh, no one is going to bring back the Black Terror, but they will bring back the Green Lantern, right? You know, there's just so many great superheroes from the 1940s uh, that will not grace the silver screen again. I think it's going to really cap their growth. So I go for stuff that is still relevant in the pop cultural zeitgeist that's the key thing and then because you know what will happen the formats will change we'll go digital we'll go to this we'll go to nfts it will still be these characters these likenesses and so the original stuff will always hold a special place so hey that's it you know if you've watched the video to this point uh mad respect i really appreciate that uh, do subscribe. I do need to see a little growth of this channel to keep producing content. Uh, that's your way of buying me a digital beer. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Thanks so much for your time. Have a good one. Late.